Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Saturday Night Movies Podcast, a podcast where friends come together to discuss the movie of the week. This week's movie was brought to you by Lolisa. Lolisa? <laughs> Little Lisa. Oh, her, <laughs> My tongue oh. just didn't kind of go up. <laughs> it just didn't stop. So I just went, oh. Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't. He, he he hasn't seen. Um, he he hasn't seen our podcast um, episode that we filmed on the same night of recording this, where I said that because um, one of the one of the cast members when she calls people and she doesn't say my name is Larissa, originally she always goes this is Larissa, and so tonight we came up with the concept that if I ever need to call somebody and they go oh who is this i can be like this is lisa so lisa. i told her she has to like call up her bank or something <laughs> and literally do that t-mobile <laughs> hello who am i talking to lisa <laughs> am i hurting your ears no. just oh, see okay. what like the what reaction. they say <laughs> like oh my god i'm a big fan of yours well, anyway <laughs> Well, I picked. So you'd the, be like, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. So back to back to this chunk of shit. <laughs> oh, my own pick. Um, in our second week of an ode to Dan Aykroyd, I. Fest. What? Snorfest. Yes. Did you fall asleep on this one too, Elmer? I did. <laughs> he did, but not as many times as he did in last week's movie. Um, so I picked The Great Outdoors, our second film to our Dan Aykroyd marathon this mm -hmm. month. Um, I have seen it one time. I'm not super attached one to it. One time before this? Yes. Yeah. You actually saw this movie before? Yes. Oh. But it was like probably 10-ish years ago. It was on and everybody knows I'm a huge John Candy fan and I love Dan Aykroyd. He's so hot back in the day, um, except as Beldar. Like I, I can't fuck with the. You cone. didn't like the cone. God, no. he could have combed you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so <laughs> I chose this movie um, because, like, you know, I saw it once, and I mean, I thought it was funny, but I wasn't like in love with it. And I figured, hey, let's just choose it. Have you guys ever seen it before? <laughs> I've never seen this movie before. And I've pretty much introduced you into the world of John Candy at this yeah. point. Yeah, which I, since John Candy was in it, I was actually excited to, like, see it. Yeah. Um, well, what was your guess? Because I just went in with a five. Neutral. For when I, the description rating, I gave it a six because... Mm -hmm. Whenever you go into the woods, it can be with friends, it can be with family, two things are either going to happen. It's going to be a funny time or everyone's going to die. <laughs> or maybe both. Uh -huh. yes. And then the trailer? The trailer, I gave it a seven because I was like, okay, this actually seems really funny. Well, what about you? The only part of this movie I think I've mentioned on a previous episode where I saw it during work, I used to work during the graveyard shift and like my lunch break used to be from five in the morning to six in the morning. And I remember seeing it, it was playing on the television. It was during the bat scene where there was a bat in the house and that's what I got from it. So going in, I was like, okay, this is gonna be a six. It, you know, John Candy's in it. It has some promise to it. So I had my hopes a little, right. a little up. So let's rate this movie. Okay. So my brain is gone. <laughs> okay, say it over time. Katie, count us down to our rating of The Great Outdoors. In three, two, one, show us your numbers. I gave it a six. Yep, and I gave it a five. I gave and it Elmer, a four. Gave it once again. drawings again? <laughs> Not as good as the previous ones. <laughs> Wait. Oh my god, that does look like Doby. <laughs> it does. And then the bear. Oh, the I like the bear. <laughs> and then John Candy. Um, you know, like I stayed at a five. 
it was there. Internet Movie Database gave it a 6.7. Rotten Tomatoes, a 40%, and Google, an 89%. So it actually got higher scores Cone than Heads. Coneheads, which is, what? I thought Coneheads was a bit funnier. However, Coneheads, as we discussed last week, the storyline had, like, there wasn't a lot of, like, a flushed out story, whereas I do think that this story was a flushed out story, but... It needed more comedy. Not by much. Like, it wasn't deep or anything. It wasn't, but at but, least you had a beginning, a middle, and an yeah, end. It uh, wasn't like, uh, put in one VHS tape, <laughs> then eject, and then put in a whole other new movie. You know, like, you didn't have that, but... I thought it was going to be better than what I ended up giving it a four. Yeah. Because um, when it started, I saw it was written by John Hughes. And I was like, well, you know, Ferris Bueller, he's done Home Alone, Breathless. Breakfast Club, which you know, when you I guys found can go out, see what I thought about that. But. Yeah, Elmer <laughs> broke hearts for the Breakfast Club. I when I found out that John Hughes uh, did this movie, I like kind of rolled my eyes and I was like, "That's why it feels like this." Yeah, very light <laughs> packaged. It. Do you want to start off with cons first? Yeah, or we can first? start off okay. with cons. What did we dislike about? The Great Outdoors. Katie? My biggest con was that this movie reminded me of planes, trains, and automobiles, only the roles were reversed, and John Candy was the serious one, and Aykroyd was the douchebaggy one. I didn't like how the twins were gingers, but they were very poorly portrayed. They were weird. They were it like wasn't a true creepy... por portrayal of a ginger? Yes. It was they're, like, they're like weird a, and creepy. It was the creepy, like shining girls. Hmm. And then my last one was just the beginning of the movie was awesome. I was like, oh my god, this is gonna be a great movie. And then the middle just kind of went like, yeah, eh. yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, you know, like that's one of my my first con. I only had three. It dragged a lot. Like the ending was good and the beginning was good. It's just the middle. Yeah, the middle was. Well, the tight. meat, the yeah. meat, like, you know, you could have two really good pieces of bread, but if the meat and the cheese suck, you know, um, I felt that the love interest with the, the older son was absolutely useless. It didn't add it necessary. It was, it was, it, it, it was taken it out and it would still be. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't add to the film. It just was like, and, and it, it just made, made it sense. longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And can I say involved in that? there were weird jumps in in the scenes and it involved whenever you had the son and the lo love in interest like when they were at the pool hall the two brothers they were at the pool hall and then he hits her and then she ends up leaving and he follows her out that scene immediately jumps to the younger brother now in a car with john candy with the and, weird twins and with those no, fucking twins with the bears I know, but the weird twins were asleep in the car. Oh, they were there? Yes. I didn't even notice them. Were you they, Were you asleep? I wasn't asleep. Oh. I was paying attention to the bears. When you put this, what is it, the the, the Zagat? What, what, were the, what were those candy bars back in the day? I don't know what he was throwing. Uh, almost like an Abba Zabba. <laughs> and just when they were like on the roof too, <laughs> with that weird scene jump, you see yeah. it again at the end. Um, he's at the fair and he's looking for the girl. And then all of a sudden he's back at the cabin with the family. And yeah. it's like, it doesn't make sense how he goes from one spot to another yeah. in like less than two it was, seconds. It was too much filler. That was my third one. It was weird. It was, it was a weird movie. But for as many like drawn out scenes that it had and like as much as it kind of took a nosedive in the middle, it still had some scenes that like had me laughing. Like when they were at, at, the, at the bar, I think it was like a bar or something. And then they were like, yeah, go go near this guy. He's like 110 years old. Take a picture with him. Get near him. Give him a kiss. And then they find out that he's a corpse. He died on the way there. Do we have any more cons? What about you, Katie? Um, No more cons, except well, then the biggest one is just the lagging. Yeah. So what did we like about this vacation film, The Great Outdoors? The first thing I really liked was... The soundtrack for the opening scene yes. and the ending. The next one was the overall plot for the movie. Like I said before, when like it's a group of friends 
or family go into the woods, either two things can happen. It's going to be a fun time or everyone's going to die. I like those setups. The lightning strike guy. <laughs> the skunk guy, the neo skunk. Or he was like six, six, six. <laughs> so this is six, 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 66 times. <laughs> and then as he's running in, in the forest, he got zapped again. I just think like his little part kind of did a lot for the movie. Um, <laughs> Damn. And John Candy, and there's Fatty, and he don't even look at camera. I Come mean, on. when you call him Fatty, I mean, don't. <laughs> Can you force him his little head up? He's like, no, don't. God, he's so big con compared to... He's like the bear. And he was bald like the bear. <laughs> he was. He was when we first got him as Al Inser the picture. When we first got him, he was completely bald. That's why they called him Mr. Feeny, because he had a wrinkly forehead. That's <laughs> the bald patch. The um, yes. This one quote with the whole like bear scene really stood out. John Candy was like, Big bear, big bear chases me. <laughs> like I laughed so hard. And then when he got slammed, I, and I liked how it wasn't just some like made up bullshit story. Like all of them thought it was actually like a real one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just how the at the end it was a shotgun lamp to save the day, <laughs> and it blew his, his butt hair off. <laughs> <laughs> Which was a prosthetic. If anybody was like worried um it definitely was a prosthetic and this bear has been in tons of films um his name is bart the bear so and he's he's just done a lot um and uh, everything was a prosthetic he doesn't naturally have a bald head there were no no bear was harmed oh so um, they didn't like shave his head to make it no because okay. you were so that's you what you i were, thought yeah because like, i remember you brought that up you're like i really hope they didn't shave his head the, the butt that poor bear and then I looked it up, and it's like, no, everything was prosthetic. Um, yeah, because I was like, Peta's gonna be pissed. Yeah, if Peta was around. Which pissed. is interesting that, oh, like, God. like whenever you see in movies that it's like an actual bear is there, and just yeah. like growling and like. That that's bear, not, I don't, I don't that care bear how trained the bear is. It's scary. But it would still. Scare yeah, but it was. It, it, would it, you it, have it, a heart attack? At the butt. <laughs> but um. It's like like uh, the bear would get like ten thousand dollars a day. Like it was one of the most right. coveted bears, like for animal like movies. It's probably eating the most expensive salmon. Probably all that caviar. But um, that bear yeah. is huge. Yep. So one one thing I found that was interesting is because growing up loving John Candy so much, especially with planes, trains, and automobiles, Uncle Buck. Um, and there's another one that's off the top of my head, can't remember, is he's always playing the goofy guy. Mm -hmm. I found it interesting that they made him play the serious straight guy, right? Like, you know, and I, I do enjoy that. And one thing I liked uh, too about this is the brother-in-law competition, that they're not even like blood brothers, they're the brother-in-laws. You know, and they hate each other so much. And Dan Aykroyd's character is such a sleazy guy. And I like how he was like telling his wife, how come uh, whenever Chet, I think his name is Chet or whatever his name is, he, like, his kids look at him as a god. My kids just stare at me like I'm an alien. Or something. And then the creepy like twins are like, <laughs> <laughs> But that, that just made me think, I wonder if the placement of characters were set up like that, so no one could say this is just a repeat of planes, trains, and trains and automobiles. Because if John Candy played the asshole character, the scammer, that's kind of what his role was in that movie. So it would have felt like they would just need uh, Steve Martin in instead of Dan Aykroyd, and then it would be like the same <laughs> movie played out in uh, the woods. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. I'm just like, I can't remember when Planes, Trains. So that was done actually in, um, doo -doo -doo. when was the Planes, Trains? In 1987. So this was a year later. Huh. Maybe. You know, I, I like the food scene when he was doing the, the steak competition when he was oh. eating the big J. And then he was like, holding on to Dan Aykroyd, like, oh, God, no more. 
<laughs> I have no more room than he throws up. Ugh, God, that steak looks so gross. I like the raccoons. <gasps> they were like the little trash little pandas. Yeah. Oh God! What <laughs> and they kept coming, cutting back to them. And what was it? Something with like, an asshole. Think these rocks are gonna stop us. <laughs> no, uh, it was. Uh, don't eat the hot dogs. You know they're made of lips and assholes. <laughs> That's what yeah, I was when was, you laughed when out was, loud. Yeah, because he was when he was barbecuing the yeah. shrimp. Or what was it? Was it was lobster, 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 lobster tails. tails. And, and it was like three hundred dollars for like or two hundred each or some shit. And I'm like, that's expensive for that ugly shit. <laughs> um, what about the boat scene when uh, when John Candy was flying down <laughs> down the lake on the skis? Did he do his own stunts? I, I'm asking because I don't. It, I doubt that he that, like because because I I know when they did the close up he like they didn't show him skiing but there were some shots where it literally kind of looked like him and not just like Has someone's hungry. Uh, <laughs> let's see. He's eaten already. Let's see the great outdoors stunts. 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 Dun, 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 dun. Um, I don't know. Like, I don't think he did his own. Because when he, because I think it was when he was like, he he let go of the thing and he was only on one ski. That and he was like coming towards land. That literally looked like him. So I unless mean, they okay. could do CGI. Well, I don't think it was CGI. I think it was just the trick of the camera. You know, like I I highly doubt. Let's see. I'm I'm on like the full like list. I'm trying to find the stunt. Oh, here we go. Stunts. Um, John Candy. His name is John Clay Scott. Stunt oh. double for John Candy. He's uncredited, and oh, he's fat. Um, so at least they got somebody. They didn't like stuff him. With oh, the so it was okay. So maybe that's why it looked real. They got a real fatty to do his stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We're, we're all, body positive we're here. We're all fatties here. <laughs> Let's see. Well, he's done a lot. He's done 131 credits of movies. So, like... Stop. Uh, he was in I Now Pronounce You Chuck Larry. Was he really? Yeah, Who did he play? Stunt double for Brad Grunberg. I, I don't know I don't who that you was. remember Brad Grunberg. Oh, yes. We had a coffee with him the other day. Um... He, well, he's still alive, and his last film he did was in 2018. It was Re Rusty Tolick, stunt coordinator. Oh, so now he's doing coordinating. He's not actually doing stunts. So sometime in, like, 2013 to 2015, he's, so that's around the time he stopped. I want to know, talking on the topic of stunts, how did they do the bear on top of the door? It looked like underneath? it somebody it, in a suit. No, it, it looked like there was some kind of spring mm. action because when he got up, the door automatically went. True. And there was like a little space between the body and the door. So but maybe he was like in a fallout. Okay, so, like all a, right. So so we're we're in a movie business, right? And okay. I approach you guys and I tell you, this is the scene. You're going to have a real bear who weighs couple like what maybe a thousand pounds or a little uh, less he was i think it, they think it's like 1800 pounds 1800 or something like more. that okay i think how can okay. it be that a, heavy they're huge a bear that almost maybe weighs a, a ton i would yeah. think like 600 and like, we're gonna have we're gonna have that bear, like 600 pounds. <laughs> we're gonna have that bear on top of a door and you gotta be under the door how much would they have to pay you for you to do that Triple my salary <laughs> because what would I your be, salary be like like what I'm what would be that number dollars. that you're like okay let's do this I'm getting underneath five the million five million and you'll let a bear stand on top of you and they have to cover all medical costs if something <laughs> goes wrong like if that bear rips my face off you're buying me a new face <laughs> if you, I mean they don't really yeah they I was hoping in the trivia it would have to be in the millions. Because and then I I, I don't know but what and I, medical costs so in yeah. case the bear goes rogue and you're missing your face they have to buy you a new one and those shoots they take time too it's not like a one and done this is done in like wrapped in ten minutes people but I also too 
what when was the original parent trap made? Because there was only that they weren't done by twins. It was only the one girl. So I yeah, wonder it if it was I wonder if they used like they had him act under the door and maybe like had like a person jump on it and then they CGI'd or clipped stuff together so the animal was on top of the door bouncing. And then when it was his shot, maybe they just had like a doll. What do you mean in the nineties? This is an eighty eight. Oh wait, uh, this. Are you talking about parent? Oh, that... Are you asking about no, 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 parent? No, no, no. I, I, I got confused. Oh, oh, and this, and this one. I'm just thinking, like maybe they yeah. used the same magic movie trick. I don't that. think CGI was that good back then, because it looked like he was under the door. It, it didn't look. I like mean, it was he like looked like 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 he looked like he was like Cal Kitty mentioned that the yeah, spring, but, the, but, but it looked like he was in a was hole. On top of it. I know, but what I'm saying is, but it, I, like he could have been in a hole where his head and stuff, everything was secure, right? Where it, the spring, nothing was gonna come down, but then like the squishy part is like a dummy. You know, like kind of like yeah. how they do like, like cut open scenes where no, you I, still see like the head. I get but, that, but at the end of the day, you're still, whether you're in a hole or not, you're still- You're still close to a bear. bear. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a bear. Would you have a heart attack underneath that door? <laughs> I wouldn't be under that door. I don't think they could put a price that I'd be, willing to say yeah i'll go under the door i don't think i could oh see you gotta commit you gotta oh, risk oh. your life for your art oh yes all right <laughs> why <laughs> screw it then the hell with the bear let's have an elephant <laughs> an alligator uh, yeah an alligator in bed <laughs> could you imagine crawl with real alligators now that would have been that would have cool. been a whole different movie god that would have been so why There's did a... they Stop doing real animals. Like there's a movie that exists with uh, what's her name? Who was the supermodel back in the day that we watched that movie at Eric's house? It was a really terrible movie, but they used real lions. And I told Gia? you, I told you that at a certain point, the lions were really attacking the people. Like the lions attacked the director. Oh God! But it wasn't Cindy Crawford. It was. I was it know. Farrah Fawcett? Maybe. What did she look like? Was she blonde? Wait a minute. Who was married? To, who was married to Antonio Banderas? Who was her, his first wife? Melody Griffin. Her. Her oh. family had actual lions that yeah, they lived they with. They did. Yeah. And are you? Serious? I don't know if it was her father or someone decided to make a movie where they had actual yeah. lions in the movie, and, and they, they said back. that throughout production, the lions were. It got to the point where they were attacking the people. Yeah. That's scary. I would Man. be like, I'm out. I'm tapping out. <laughs> I like my face on my face. <laughs> so no. um, I asked this of the two of you, because we all three had different upbringings and experiences. Since this movie was basically like family vacation, you know, did you guys ever have a family vacation especially when the family was trying to like force bonding or do you do you guys do any road trips um i vaguely remember when i was little um me and my family we were driving down some old tiny path and i i want to say it was where like the I want to say Oregon Trail, but I don't know if it's that because it was going up a mountain and then we like came to an edge and then it kind of just went like, mm. and like we were going down and I just remember thinking, holy shit, we're all going to die. <laughs> 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 because we were in a little Honda putt-putt and like. <laughs> little putt-putt. <sighs> what about you? Did you ever have any road trips as a kid? Um... The truest family vacation I had was with you all when we went it's to true. Washington. But as a kid, there was only one time that I remember that my entire family got in a car and drove somewhere, like to another state. And that was like, we went from New York to Ohio. And there was like oh, six people in the car. And I just remember like my dad and my mom, they used to tell the story later on when, when I grew up that when, when we took that road trip and I, was probably around like maybe 
five or six that I was complaining because like he took two of his um, his friends with him on the road oh, trip. Wait, this is it, story. it ended up being that it wasn't even a family vacation. He was going to Ohio to buy a car. Yeah. And that that's like the family vacation. But <laughs> like one of his friends would talk to me in, in like the back seat. And I remember saying that his mouth smelled. And he looked like Leon. And he looked like a lion because he had like a really big No, no, big no. Beard. It was the guy that was on, um, what was his name? Or the guy from Sons of Anarchy? Because your mom, whenever we were, yeah. we were big on Sons of Anarchy, whenever we, the three of us would sit down to watch it, she'd always bring up that story about how that guy, and you, you said it out loud that he smelled or like something. Like his breath smelled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is also this is during the time when you still said everything out loud. Oh yeah, I didn't have a filter. I, I didn't good. meet Black, is, Santa yeah, Black Santa yet. Yeah, Black Santa yet. This is pre Black Santa. Um, <laughs> I had one that I really like. Still this day, my mom surprised me on a ten day trip. I think it was ten days. Um, we we were still living in California, so it wasn't even in, in Nevada. Um, she took me on a California coast trip to visit all five baseball stadiums. So we went to all five games because I was really big into baseball. So we hit all the stadiums. We went to all the games. Um, we went like everywhere and we had so many crazy experiences. Um, one of them, my mom accidentally was like driving the wrong way on the bridge. <laughs> And, and, and luckily she was able to pull off earlier before getting on to the bridge, like where it was too, too late. It was the big double decker one, the scary one that's in Oakland. If anybody ever knows about it, I can put in a picture um, where if you're brave, you'll go on the top deck of the bridge instead of the bottom. Um, it's kind of like, I can't remember. Is it, is it like the George Washington bridge where it's like two? Why is that brave? Um, because people get really scared because you're going over the ocean. But aren't people. you going over the ocean on the bottom? But there's something about being on the high deck. I don't know. That's everyone. But I remember the, these guys were like, you're going the wrong way. How but, did she go the wrong way? I don't remember. It was something <laughs> like, I just remember because it, cause it, it was it's like, like a one way. It was a one way. One day, like, I remember we got in a cab. And I don't know if you guys ever heard of the Mr. Toad's Wild Ride like at Disneyland yeah. where it's like super crazy and bumpy. This cab, I swear he had to been on some uppers, bennies, whatever. He was jumping up so much as where our heads, cause there were no seat belts in the back, like were hitting. And I'm like this like three foot nothing. And my head was literally like hitting the top of the roof. <laughs> Sourdough bread. And sourdough. there were, there we, well, we walked to um, Fisherman Wharf and it was a long walk. And I remember seeing uh, bakeries and I don't know why it's like you know some memories stick with you mm -hmm. in the window they had sourdough bread shaped as um, Raggedy Ann and Andy and a dinosaur that's kind of cool for like, you know? especially like a kid I don't <laughs> remember and <laughs> the reason is not important but I took a road trip with my friend and uh, we went upstate and to go upstate it only takes to drive there it's probably like three hours maybe. six hours maybe maybe a little less and uh we were both like i would say like maybe 17 or so he had just gotten his license like he didn't even have his license yet he just he just had like a little slip the little that, paper yeah exactly and so uh my mom she got us someone because she she didn't drive she didn't have a license so a co-worker rented a car and let us drive it meanwhile we're not on the insurance my friend he has the paper license and we're going upstate and what should have been a six hour ride and this was before map quest before where you had the book where you had to write down you know, everything so oh God. we were just the like old times oh man we would <laughs> pulled I, out maps it was it was a car it was a, a nissan uh no it was a suzuki swift the thing was like a one, it was just like a two like door a Geo car. Metro. Yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah, like a Geo Metro. Or and, a Santa Fe. And so we, we, we had already been driving like maybe, 
I would say like maybe two hours. And then all of a sudden I'm looking at the dashboard and I see like the brake light is on and I don't drive. I don't know what it is. And I, I was asking him, I'm like, yo, are you like, are you riding the brake or something? Like, why is that brake light on? So he doesn't know he's still fresh into driving too. We're looking around <laughs> the brake, the well, actual brake manual brake, brake, it was on, but yet he was still able to get to do like 50, 60 miles an hour. Oh, I don't know how the man. hell. So is this the same trip you guys almost ended up in Canada? Yes. <laughs> so we, we were driving and this was probably, this was probably like, 10 hours into it into driving and we're like where the hell are we like how have we not gotten there yet and i see a sign that it said it said something about like quebec or right yeah like something <laughs> arriving at quebec or something mountain and i was like Bro, we're, going to, we're almost hitting canada so then we had to turn around and it was like fog so thick that it was like and you know the blues brothers when the the thing bursts and they can't see it was like that. I had I had to literally stick my head out just to tell him he's still on the road, <laughs> and it was just it was one of the craziest things. He we, later on we ended up like he left the car the keys in the car and locked the doors, and we were in the parking lot and we were like, if we call the cops and they ask us for like insurance, you're not on the insurance. I don't know if this is gonna be like a problem or anything. So the whole time when the when the cop finally came to help us out, he never asked for anything like that. And so, you know, we had an interesting journey. <laughs> well, is there is there anything else? I we think can everyone say about just this? needs to take a road trip because of this movie. Yeah. Well technically school. this wasn't a road trip but movie, at least but it was like out, a get family into the great vacation. outdoors. Get in, you yes. know, it doesn't mean it has to be in the woods, but just Go get lost and end up in Canada. They're nice. People. I mean, I, I mean, I, I did. I drove from Massachusetts to Nevada in three and a half days. Now that was an adventure. How so, the hell did that happen? Um, a friend of mine, also named Katie, I met her when I was working at the bookstore, and a month later, because we just she was a customer, we hit it off, and then a month later, she's like, so, um, I have my car that's still in Massachusetts. <laughs> Are you? I've only knew this girl for a month. Um, if you can pay your airfare and um, your, oh gosh, any any like small food, like snacks and whatever she did, she covered room, uh, she covered room and, and meals. Um, and the only deal was, besides me doing my own airfare, was I would have to, I would, I would split half of the driving. So what we did with for me is i did eight hours straight and then she broke hers um her eight hours so we did 16 hours of driving um she did four in the in the beginning of the day and then she did because glare is really bad with me so she did the night um she didn't have glasses so we did 16 hour days um because we we i had to be back in class on a certain day and then she had to be at work monday morning so and she could only take off like one day of work so we literally flew to mass and then we were there for like a day to like enjoy and talk and i met her friends and stuff and then got in her car and we drove the country and i remember it was so much fun in the beginning and we stayed at really nice motels and then as we kept getting to the west coast and we, we stayed in the same chain i think it was like best western or something horrible so wait, absolutely you, horrible you flew over there and then drove back yes. or you drove and then flew back no 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 we flew from las vegas because when she moved to las vegas from massachusetts she left her car because on her i think the story is like on her way home from like a comedy show as she's driving down the uh, the highway her um axle just fell <laughs> from her car. yeah oh. so like um and so she she left the car you know get fixed and then it just stayed in the yard for a certain amount of time so when we came um so we flew from vegas to mass and um we went to like a concert at six flags and then we kind of went around did a little touristy stuff for like 48 hours and then we drove um did you ever get to do the salem massachusetts which no because we weren't we weren't near salem um it was like we were just outside of boston Oh. So we did like Boston just a little bit. I didn't have like a lot of time because the very next morning we had to get up and, and start a trek. And I remember it started off pleasant. 
And by the time we hit like New Mexico, mind you, it's the same chain, the same exact chain, and they charged more money for ch for crappier rooms. And I remember the, the the worst one was I think it was in New Mexico or in Arizona. And I swear we found um, vaginal secretions on the <laughs> on the curtain. Things smelled. It was so nasty. I had this TV moment, like one of those TV movie moments. So she goes in to get some stuff. I'm putting gas in the car and I look over and I was like, huh. And then I'm like this. And then I look again. I'm like, holy shit. It's the Jeopardy van, the Jeopardy bus. You remember when Jeopardy used to travel the country, their little, their big bus to like, like oh, sign yeah. people up or you don't remember that? No. So, and then I remember asking guy, yo, is Alex Trebek back there? He gave us free swag. But it was just weird. Like, how do you just look over and you see the giant Jeopardy bus? See, that, mm. that makes me think of when me and my parents originally moved out here because we drove up you did, yeah. and looked around to see, like, where it was, like, it, where we could live and what was the nice part of town and what was the sketchy, like, what was the west side versus the east side. <laughs> Everything from everything on the west side of the river, you're safe. Everything on the east side, you're probably going to get murdered. <laughs> Sounds about us. It's like every three blocks. You just don't want to be on the, that third block. And then you go three more, and then you're on another crappy block. But the in-between is not bad. <laughs> just depends and on where you go. And like when we were driving back home, we decided to hit up the coast, like drive down the coast. And it was so nice. And we stopped at a uh, little motel and for the day, cause we drove like eight hours a day. And I went to lay down and I flipped the pillow over, put my head down and I saw like a black streak and I like jumped up and I was like, oh my God. And it literally looked like someone had makeup on and just went. Mm. And then I went to like, go like wash my face in the bathroom. And I shit you not a used towel was like hanging on the thing. And I was like, this is fucking disgusting. <laughs> well, you had your experience when we drove from Las Vegas to Sacramento when we oh, moved to New York God. and you had bed bugs. Yeah. Bed bugs. And then there was that shower head that was just like, rock hard that you, <laughs> put, just, you put a towel I had to put a towel on top of it just to kind of ease the pressure that it was hitting me with because i felt like i was getting beaten yeah and then <laughs> we have video footage of of the it's it's private on on my personal youtube um it's not great quality footage but we did a room tour and <sighs> do you remember the bathroom the oh the bible i can't yeah i don't what remember. Wrote, I remember what was it <laughs> They wrote F Obama. Oh, but they used the real the real word. Yep. Yeah, yeah they did. <laughs> All over the place. And it was like in a lot of places too. But yeah, I, I just remember you sitting down and you're like, so if you ever, you know, trying to take a shit and then the door opens, you get oh, yeah. your knees hit. And we spent a lot of money in those rooms and they they moved us to the suites, which was even worse. And they comped us by giving us a, a shuttle ride to the airport. And when we say and a it shuttle was ride, the guy's it's... truck. <laughs> it was like, okay, we'll all three sit in the front, and you can drive us to the airport. Oh my god! Because I, I vaguely remember this story because you told me that you guys had, you guys ended up like sleeping in a hotel that had a. Uh, can we stop calling it a hotel? No, it was a motel. motel. It was motel. literally. It looked Sorry. like Norman Bates. Like it was in that U shape. That's what mine looked like, but it was yeah. like a giant L. It was like a short one and then a very long one. Yeah. And then it was like there was a diner in the parking lot. <laughs> oh God! Do you remember? Wasn't the remote control like chained? Yes, yeah, it was it chained. Was, yeah. I've been in sun where or some where it's like attached to the thing and all you can do is like Just twirl swivel. it around. <laughs> You're like, well, that's really helpful. <laughs> you know? And the irony of it is is when we got in before before he stepped in, he's like, I am so scared I'm gonna get bud bugs. And the, and I was sleeping right next to him and not more than about 30 seconds to a minute, and they didn't touch me at all. He gets up screaming and his whole body is covered in bites. 
Yeah, it was really bad. Not like the Comfort Inn where I stayed on my road trip. My I friend. think that was the chain that we stayed in. That, was Comfort Inn. I, I mean, we're not sponsored, but, but I wish we quality. could be. That is quality. It was quality. They until give you a nice you little to, breakfast. But until the, you get to the West Coast. In the morning, and my friend broke the waffle iron because he had never used it before. <laughs> so he broke it. And then as we're sitting eating, we just hear another family that was there for like a graduation. They were like, oh, this is broken. <laughs> we're just sitting there Don't like, you have a picture of you getting excited about the hangers that were in the room? Yeah, the hangers were weird. Because it's yeah. like, I think you took them off it was and the pole. hook would stay on. Yeah. Yeah, it was... Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> well um, I... We, great outdoors! Yeah, great outdoors. It was fun. It was there. I would recommend... Like, well, it's a nice one and done. Yeah, wa watch it at least once. But just yeah. know that the middle is very... Um, it's spam. It's there, but you like spam, so. Ew. When I'm desperate, fry up a piece of spam, put some cheese on it. When I'm desperate. Well, take a out, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had spam on that one. note, like sour. So Ew. Cool. <laughs> okay. Well, that's all we got for you guys today. Tune in next Saturday for another movie review. In the meantime, smash that subscribe button, ring that little bell so you get notified of all new content, and we will see you next Saturday. Bye. Watch out for the bats. And the bears. Lips and assholes. <laughs> 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 <laughs>